Praise God. Jesus, bless this message. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. And Jesus, I want to pray right now over the ones that sent in to that young family that just lost their father and husband, God. I pray, God, I know some of them are just stepping out from the heart and some of them are really struggling themselves, God, but they put themselves on the back burner and they reached out with something and they helped that family, God, so she could be able to bury her husband or lay him to rest. Thank you, Jesus, for my group. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, I ask you bless them. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys, thank you for coming through for that family. Um, I, I got a good group of people here, y'all. I'm telling you, hearts, and Jesus is raising. We are Jesus doers. I don't know what's going on out there, but there's some good people here from the heart. Thank you guys for helping them. Um, anybody else? It's on my yesterday's video. Go to my community page. Just go there. I would prefer, if you didn't mind, you to just send it to, to their GoFundMe and not so much to me. If you don't know another way to do it, there's a few of you that sent it to me and then I had to send it to her. But I would prefer if you could just go to their GoFundMe and just send it to them. Okay. Um, other than that, praise God. Thank you guys. You know, I do got some good people here, y'all. I'm telling you, I do. It's a small channel. Small group don't matter. I got good people here that loves God. I thank those of you that stepped up and helped that family. That was an emergency. Thank you guys. And I thank those of you that come here and learn and, and you help our ministry. Thank you for that, y'all. And I also want to thank those of you that's helping us help Africa. I was thinking about that, talking to Igor about that this morning. There's not a lot of people here that help like that. There's a few. Okay, but do you know something? We have not, I have not had a single month. I send to Africa on the 10th of every month. And I hold everything till the 10th. I have not had one month. Not one month where I wasn't able to send something from our group to Africa. Sometimes it's big. Sometimes it's small. It just depends on what how it comes in. But we have not gone one month with sending nothing to Africa. You guys, God sees what you're doing. God sees what I'm doing. God sees us, which is why he's answering prayers and blessing us. You guys need to see this. So honor God. Obey God. Trust God. Think about God. Think about people, then yourself. That's how God's teaching us to do it. And then he blesses us for putting others before us. Thank you. We are Jesus doers. You guys are rock solid. Awesome. Now, last night, God gave me a very, very intense dream. Very intense dream. Uh, it went on and on. I woke up like two times, two or three times. I don't remember exactly. Third time, I think I just woke up, stayed up. But, and I, I just, I just, I woke up and drifted back into it, and it continued. It continued. Okay. Now, as I've been telling you guys here, Luke 13, start at verse 22. He ain't been stopping talking about it. Okay. I saw an ocean of people, okay, that's not going to get in, that think they are. I talk about it all the time with you because I saw it. Okay. And then here comes Luke chapter 13, verse 22, starts there. And I can't stop. And then he gives this to me last night in my dream. Sometimes the way God does me is when I'm asleep, he'll teach me. And I know I'm being taught. Sometimes it's by an angel, sometimes it's by God. And I know I'm being taught something really deep. Okay, and it's like he's teaching my spirit. All right. Anyway, y'all, it's so deep. I please hope you pay attention. Please pay attention. There is Satan, I told you. God told me Satan has infiltrated the churches all about here. And I told you guys so many times you think there's a big Christian ministry and stuff, and they're not giving you the meat. You're not getting the meat. Now, I'm going to tell you one more time until God tells me to stop. Satan's the God of this world. Here's the world. What will he keep you focused on? The world. You understand? Keep you focused on when it was this right here. Boy, I saw a Christian. That's all they focused on was this right here. The first year and a half of it. That was all they focused on. Videos was just about that. They were searching about that. There was hardly not much of this at all. That's what the devil does. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He don't care, y'all. 
if you sit down and call yourself a Christian. He don't mind that. He doesn't mind if you have a Bible in your hand. He doesn't mind standing up and reading it to you. But what he won't do is teach you or motivate you to, to getting in this word. He won't help you study it and understand it. He certainly ain't going to uh, motivate you to obeying it. Okay, but what he will do is he'll stand up and read, you know, a verse like, uh, praise God, man is like a breath, his days are like a passing shadow, you know, and lift your hands to God, you know, he'll do that. And then take you no meat, no helping you understand, no helping you grow, no showing you how, nothing, none of that. You will not be growing. You will be hearing. Okay, and he will keep you focused on what's going on in the world. Keep you focused, y'all. He's the God of this world. So whatever he can do to keep you from obeying God, from obeying God's word, doing what it says, then baby, he got you. He got you hook, line, and sinker. He reeling you straight to hell. And there's a lot of Christians, so-called Christians, that think they are going to go to hell. Okay, so Satan deceives you, and I told you guys, two of the main ways God showed me, big ways, is through getting you to disobey God with your money, making money your God, not helping ministries, not helping your teachers and preachers, not helping people that pop up with emergencies like that girl, but they lost her husband, no way to bury him. You know, he will make sure that you will say, well, I'm in, look at my situation. I'm so, I can't help myself. I won't help anybody. I'm going to give you my last $50. You know, money becomes a God to people. They won't help people because they got to have it. Okay? That's number one. Number two, he's going to make sure that you don't forgive people that have hurt you. They've hurt you so bad that you harbor it and hold it and it builds and festers into this hate. Because what is Satan? Hate. He's the opposite of God. God is love. That means Satan is hate. And that's what he wants to build in you. Because if you've got that hate building up in you, then you cannot obey God. You're not obeying God because you got hate. Opposite love. Night and day. Okay? So he'll get you that way. Now, what he's infiltrating the churches. He's behind the many pulpits. He's behind many of these videos. Many of you watch. How will you know? Because you got to be earnestly in God's word. Earnestly in God's word. And doing what the word says. Not just reading it. Doing what it says. Letting the Holy Spirit transform your life. Maybe you used to be a person that's like, I ain't helping that person. because it. And God transform you like, here, God, I trust you. Here, here. It's a constant state of yes, Lord. And then God sees you transform. Then he blesses you. But Satan, nah. He wants to make sure you don't obey God. He don't care if you know God. He don't care if you know his word. But he wants to make sure you do not obey him. Because if you don't obey God because you love him, um, then you will not go to him. And hell is widening, y'all. Hell is widening as we're speaking. And there's a lot of Christians, think they were Christians, in hell right now. Right now. So as I've read to you, let's do it one more time. Luke chapter 13. Go ahead. Let's do it one more time. Hold on. Let me get to it. Luke chapter 13, start at verse 22. Please pay attention and wake up. And I'm going to tell you what he told me in my dream last night, my sleep. And he went through the cities and the villages teaching and journeying towards Jerusalem. And then one said to him, Lord, are there few who are saved? And he said to them, strive to enter through the narrow gate. Mm, it's not wide, y'all. It's very narrow. Squeeze through it, Okay. Strive to enter through the narrow gate for many, many, I say to you, will seek to enter in and they will not be able to. Many people think I'm going to heaven. I'm a Christian and, and, and they will not go. They will go straight to hell. When once the master 
of the house has risen up and shut the door and you yourself standing outside, you begin to knock saying, Lord, Lord, open for us. He'll say to you, I don't know you. Where are you from? I don't know you. Then you will begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence and you taught in our streets saying, I went to church. I read the Bible. I did this. I did that. I was a Christian. I prayed to you. I believed in you. Yeah, but you're not a believer. Did you love me enough to obey me? Because Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey me. And you can't obey him if you don't know him. Now, I'm not talking about know of him. Everybody knows of him and think they know. I'm talking about know him on a personal, intimate relationship level. Do you know, as I've told you many times, what God's feasts are? Do you even know about the feast? Do you know what's in the Ark of the Covenant? Most Christians walking this planet don't know what's in the Ark of the Covenant. You know where it tells you? Right here. Who is the Ark of the Covenant? Who is the covenant? It's Jesus. So we, there's a lot of stuff that you're not being told or taught. I told you Satan's infiltrated many churches. He'll say many things to you. Read the Bible to you. But he will not motivate. See, in my part as a teacher, I'm ordained by God and himself, Jesus Christ, to teach he did that. What will a teacher do? A good teacher. What will a good teacher from Jesus do, y'all? They will motivate you to walking the walk yourself. They will help you. They'll motivate you into the scriptures. They'll point out things in your life that you need to see in the scriptures. They'll guide you, direct you into loving, knowing, honoring, and obeying God and resisting the devil. Not just reading you the Bible. What we do here, Jesus teaches through me here, you guys, and you guys are going to have to wake up. You're going to have to wake up. You're going to have to hear, and somebody needs to tell you. Somebody needs to tell you. There are going to be many, many, think they're Christians, not going to get in. Hell is widening, you guys. Now, we got two of the things that's going to send a lot of people to hell. What's the big, big thing that Satan is using to deceive you with? The great deception in the last days, you all, is Satan deceiving the Christians. Repent. Repentance. Jesus was plain to me in my last night to me, y'all. Repentance. And he's not playing around with this. What does it mean to repent? Just Turn around? Is that what it means? Just turn around? No, it means confess. I've been through this with confess. Tell him, I, yes, acknowledge your sin. Write this down. Acknowledge your sins, y'all. Acknowledge them. Write them down. Acknowledge your sins. Confess them to him. God, I did this and it is wrong. And repent and say, I'm sorry. And then you stop. Now what's the next step? You have to grow. You have to grow in the word. That's why he says, forsake not assembling thyself together like we do here four nights a week. And we're adding a fifth night to it. So we come together and study the word so that you can grow. I know there's some of you coming in that you know more about other stuff. But that does not mean that you got that relationship down with Jesus Christ. He brought you guys here. All of you. So that you can learn how to have that relationship with him. Because if not, Satan will steal you. He will steal you. And he's stealing many, many, many. The Bible says people think they're Christians and they're not. As you see in Luke chapter 13, start at verse 22. What do you mean I can't get in? What do you mean I can't get in? You know how many of that's going to happen to? I'm going to tell you another reason why people don't know how to repent. Repent does mean stop, and it means start growing, start walking, start obeying. Because Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey me. All of it. Now, these preachers out here preaching, that's what you're going to call it, that you cannot lose your salvation. That's the biggest lie Satan got for you guys. You cannot lose your salvation. Do you know what that means, y'all? Can you lose it? Well, let's see what the Bible says. First of all, you have to repent. And just because you once saved, always saved stuff, 
Re that means that I can say, Jesus, forgive me. I'm sorry. And then I'm forgiven, right? Praise God. Now I can go and shoot up heroin, have a sexual affair on my husband. I can go and, and lie and steal and kill and I'm going to heaven. Wrong. Wrong. That is a lie. And Satan is deceiving many of you guys into thinking that. And here you come here. This might make some of you, this might step on some of your toes. This might make you a little angry, but you know what? I speak God's word straight from his throne room, whether you like it or whether you don't. Somebody needs to tell you. Somebody needs to tell you God's truth. Can you lose your salvation? Absolutely. And not only did it happen to me, y'all, 17 years ago, it's happening to many people right now as we speak. And you know what the Bible says? Many, 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 many more. It's going to happen to many are going to fall away from the faith. Now, do you know God's going to judge his house first? That's what he said to me last night in my sleep. My, I judge my house first. Let's look it up in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's see. 1 Peter 4, 17. Let's fly through this. 1 Peter 4, 17. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first then what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? It starts with us first. Are you obeying God? I ask you that question right now. Are you? Do you even know God? Do you know what to obey? Are you obeying God? You better figure it out, y'all. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty seven. 27. Uh, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty seven. 27 through 31. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks of this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself every day. Examine yourself. And, and this is talking specifically right here about communion and not so specifically. It's your everyday walk with Jesus. Examine yourself. You better live in a constant state of repentance, y'all. I mean, you better recognize. God's saying recognize when you are sinning because that sin, y'all, is opposite God. Sin will separate you and it'll send you straight to hell and it's sending many people in hell right now that thought they were saved forever. They can live however they want to. They're saved. It does not work that way. Let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. What happens in that? There's some, there's some take up your cross stuff going on there. It may not be so fun, okay? For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner and eats and drinks judgment to himself. I mean, don't fake it. If you're in, if Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, then make him Lord of your life. How do you do that? You know him by his word. You pray to him. And you obey him, all of him. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. Amen. So you got to check yourself out every day, every day, y'all. Let's see what the Bible says about repent. You better live in a constant state of recognizing and repenting. Acts 3.19 Repent, therefore, and be converted. That means changed, made new, not the same old you. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. He said, repent and, there's an A-N-D, be converted, make a change. You cannot continue to walk in your sins thinking you're going to float up into heaven. Satan will lie to you and tell you once you're saved, you're always saved. That's a lie from the pit of hell and is standing behind many pulpits and many videos today. And many people calling themselves a Christian believe that and they're going straight to hell. You know what? If you believe that, 
You never were saved. You never gave, you never, and that's what they're finding out in hell. They were never saved to begin with. Because I'm going to tell you right now, when you are saved, you will start seeking the scriptures. You'll be searching. You'll be studying. You'll be searching. You'll be starting to obey the things God told you to do. You'll be learning how to love your brothers and sisters. You'll be learning how to put them first before yourself. You'll be learning God. You'll be learning uh, how, to, how to walk the walk. You'd be learning to let God use you. You would be starting to obey everything he said to do and showing God you trust nobody and nothing but him. Just walking around thinking I'm a Christian, there's no obedience there, you're not a Christian. And you will not experience heaven. And you will not experience God. These people that think once saved, always saved, you guys, you know what? They, 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 they think, they honest to God believe that because they, that means you can lie. You can steal. You can have adulterous affairs. You can murder. Uh, you can, you can, you can do all this stuff and still go to heaven. And it's a lie. Many people in hell today that believe that. Many. There is no once saved, always saved, y'all. No once saved, always saved. Now, you're secure if. You give your life to Jesus, you confess, you repent, and you ask him for salvation, and then you let him come in and change you. You start seeking him, you study, and you start to obey the things God said to do, all of them. Then you're secure as long as you walk in it. He said, if, that means you got a choice, if you abide, that means stay, you can't abide somewhere you ain't never been. If you abide in me and... My words abide in you. That means these, this word is becoming part of who you are. You're actually doing the things this word says to do. Do you understand? I know there's some big preachers, y'all. Big preachers out here. Fancy. Millionaires, billionaires, fancy preachers speaking beautiful language. I mean, took classes on etiquette of how to talk and everything. Telling you can't lose your salvation just because they're so big and beautiful. People believe it. And they sending many people straight to hell with them. Taking many people to hell with them. You guys, we're in a time of great deception. You, you need to open your eyes, y'all. You need to open your eyes. Those of you, I talked to somebody, I talked to a bunch of people, but yesterday, one specific... A person having all kinds of issues going on, all kinds of issues. Never met this person before. And I said, how many, ho, 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 hold it, hold it, hold it. Did you have, when's the last time you studied the Bible? Do you study it every day? Do you try to make time? I haven't studied in a long time. Not in a long time. But then I don't hear God. Can you ask God this for me? Can you ask God that for me? God don't work that way, y'all. But why can't you hear God? I'll tell you what, your first step to hearing God is to make up your decision and then get in here and go listen to him. I know y'all wanted to hear, y'all wanted to fly by on a magic carpet and sprinkle fairy dust and stuff. He does not do that, y'all. You're here to learn a lesson on this earth, and I, I'm here to motivate you and suggest that you go learn that lesson. So God can transform you and get the blow to sin off of you at your life. But if you're not in this word, y'all, you're going to be deceived. If you're not in this word the way we try to push you into it here, you're going to be deceived. You're going to fall into Satan's hand. You're going to fall straight to hell with the ones that are teaching you. Satan dresses up like an angel of light, y'all, meaning some of these pastors, people y'all listen to, they got you focused on nothing but a world, 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 world events. Uh... Dragging people straight to hell, y'all. People call themselves Christian. It's okay to know world events. But like God is leading us to do here and we are Jesus stewards, you get a whole lot of meat, a whole lot of uh, time helping you guys study, showing you where the scripture, encouraging you to pick it up and study with. Go, so, I showed you how to dissect it. Come on, get in the scripture and we're encouraging you four nights a week and every day on YouTube here. And then God gives us world, and new, world events at the end of class just to keep you up on what's going on. Then we go right back to Jesus. We don't focus. It ain't every day here on this channel. You get 
This world breaking news, breaking, 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 breaking. No. No. What you get here is what most people don't want, and it's the meat. The meat that will help transform your life so that you can go to heaven, y'all. Please hear the word. This is, this is big on God's heart. This is huge on his heart. And me and Igor saw a miraculous uh, event this morning about this that God revealed to us. Y'all, God is, he's talking here. He's talking here. He's talking here. In the name of Jesus. So I encourage every single one of you that walked around thinking that you can't lose your salvation, even though Lucifer himself lost it. Adam and Eve lost it. And many more other people are losing it. And the Bible says many are going to fall away from the faith. Many are going to live. Well, Luke chapter 13, verse starting verse 22, told you. Many people thinking they're going to heaven, y'all, and they're not going. They're not going. What I'm encouraging you to do is make sure right now, are you even saved? Did you ever mean it? The first time you said you weren't walking this earth thinking you're saved, knowing you ain't obeying God's word, knowing you're not abiding in it. I want you to stop right now. Make your mind up. Jesus wants you to stop right now. Make your mind up. Examine your life. Examine your heart. Are you one that's like, I'm not going to do this for that. I'm not going to give that to God. I'm not going to do that for God. I can't forgive so-and-so. I ain't going to help that ministry. I'm not, you know, is that you? Then you need to examine your life. You need to examine your life right now. Say, Jesus, if you mean it, I realize I have sinned against you. If you know what, tell him what. And I repent. I ask you to cleanse me and purify my heart, my way of thinking, God. Give me a hunger for your word. I want to know your word. I want to make you Lord of my life. And then thank him in Jesus' name. Now, that's the repent, right? Now you're not done repenting. You're not done. Now you go and make him Lord of your life. And I'm telling you something. You ain't searching and listening and searching and listening and studying and searching and listening to, to Jesus here. Um, and you're not doing the things God told you to do in his word then he's not Lord of your life. Either you love him or you don't. Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey me. Let's read it. Let's read it in the name of Jesus. Go to the book of John. Right now, open your Bibles to the book of John. Turn to John. Let's start at chapter 14. You need to see this for yourself. And you need to understand it. Because everybody that think they're going ain't going, y'all. Whole bunch of them. 1421. He who has or keeps, your Bible may say keeps, that means obeys. He who has my commandments and keeps them. It does not mean keep them in your pockets or in your head to know about it. It means you do them. He who has my commands, in other words, he who knows about them, and you should be seeking if you don't know, I encourage you to get in and find out. He who has my commands and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. So all of you saying, I can't hear God. I don't know. God's not doing nothing. Are you keep or do you love him? Are you keeping his, are you obeying his commands? And I told you guys now, there ain't no baby bottle suckers around here. Okay. It ain't just thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not. And then the thou shalt, and it is those two, but it's not just that. You may not know his feasts, but he said, learn them. And we are learning them here. So take your time and your uh, willpower and learn them with us. God is teaching them to us. No human. God only. And it might seem baby steps to you. It don't matter. God will teach you to make sure you understand them. Okay? Um, thou shalt not steal. Are you stealing? Because if you're not obeying God, you're the biggest thief walking this planet. Are you murdering? 
Have you forgiven people that have hurt you or not forgive them? You holding on to anger? Because if not, you are a murderer. Okay. Are you lying? Are you, you know, all this check your life, y'all. Do you know God? Are you praying? Are you going to fellowship like he said to do? It may not seem like a command to you, but when God said, forsake not, assembling that self, it's not a question. It's not a suggestion. He's telling you. And everything he tells you in this word is to help you not get deceived by Satan and get drawn straight to the pit of hell, y'all. You need to wake up, church, and somebody got to tell you. And Jesus picked me, and I will tell you. I will tell you. One more, John 15, 7. If you abide in me, again, there's that if means you got He's talking to a Christian, someone who said, Jesus, forgive me, I'm a sinner, save my soul. You can't abide in him if you've never been in him. If you abide in me and, and two things, my words abide in you. Ask what you will, ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Abide in him. Abide is obey. You can say abide is know him and obey him. Not that many people doing that, y'all. It's a very narrow road. Please wake up. If you are one that thinks, well, I can't obey God. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. It's just a choice you're making not to. So I encourage you to obey him, y'all, because if not, Satan's going to steal you. And there's a view that thinks that there's uh, once saved, always saved. Better open your eyes real quick. Open your eyes real quick. Satan's stealing a lot of people at the church with that big fat lie. All right. I pray for y'all in Jesus name. We have Google meets tonight It's Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We're starting in Leviticus chapter 23 tonight, learning God's feast the way he's teaching it to us. I encourage you to come. Okay. The information, some of y'all don't listen is on jesusdoers.com. It'll tell you how to log on to Google meets, give you the code and everything. All right. So I'll see some of y'all there tonight. Uh, thank those of you again that helped towards that that fundraiser for that family. Thank you for that. Thank those of you now that are helping. We are Jesus doers, helping the ministry, God's, the work of the Lord, God's kingdom grow and helping us do what we're doing in Africa. That falls on our hands, y'all. Not just me. It's all of us. God brought you here. You're learning, you're growing. Then he put that in your lap too, because everything that's, you know, part of, it's his command. Give God what his that goes to where you're learning from. Help your teachers and preachers. It's in Timothy or Titus. I forget which one. Go read it yourself. Look it up. And help other people. That shows God you love him when you're able to abide in him, y'all. And don't let anything as Satan does try to make you feel like that's bad stuff. That's what the devil will tell you. God's word is God's word and God's word is truth. Ain't nothing, none of you can do to change it, but you get to choose to abide in it or disobey him. All your choice, but the consequences are there or the rewards are there. Either way. Now I'm going to tell you something. God picked a tough cookie when he picked me to do this job because I'll stand up for God. I'll stand up for his people and I'll stand up for his kingdom because this time when I stand in front of him, it's going to be a smile on his face and I'm going to get that. And I'm working earnestly every day for it and telling the truth of his word, exactly how he gives it to me. And I'm going to tell you something. He's going to say, well done, my daughter. That's what Kim's going to get this time. Up to you what you get. But I would listen. I would listen. And I would start doing right. Do right by God's kingdom. Do right by the people helping you. And do right about helping other people that all of a sudden need help. Uh, we, we are Jesus doers. We help a lot of people. Maybe not a lot of help in this ministry. But we help a lot of people in many, many ways. Because we love God. And we love you. And God loves you. And we're trying to help open your eyes, y'all, before Satan sucks your soul straight to hell. Because as I've told you many times, you're one heartbeat away from death. And once you experience death, that's it, folks. That's it, folks. Wake up, church, and somebody got to tell you. And you need to go and tell somebody. We got to reach people before it's too late. 
Thank you all so much. I'll see y'all tonight in Google Meets in Jesus' name. Thank you guys. Anything you need is in the description on the videos. Look in the description or you can go to JesusDoers.com. Um, again, anybody new or whatever that's interested in going to Israel with us, October 17th, the week of October 17th, uh, come on and email me. Killkim68 at gmail.com. It's always in my descriptions. Or you can look on JesusDoers.com and email Josh and tell him, I'm with Kim's group, even, you know, but I'm telling you something. If y'all are sending in your hundred dollar deposits, there's a lot of people sending it in and now changing their minds and it's messing the whole group up. So please think about it thoroughly. Make your mind up before you send that in because it, you know, it interferes with us getting, moving forward, getting our plane tickets. Okay. Cause we have to have eight heads and we'll get eight heads and then somebody will change their mind and drop off right when we're about to go get our plane tickets. So please think about other people, y'all, before you go and, and do this. Think it through. But think it through pretty quick, okay? In Jesus' name, God bless you all. Thank some of y'all for what you've done for, for our ministry. God bless you, me and Igor. Don't forget Igor. His world news is on JesusDoers.com in the world tab section. You can go see what we're doing in Africa on JesusDoers.com. You can get witnessing t-shirts, and I have a hat there on JesusDoers.com. And no, this t-shirt and hat does not help our ministry. It has nothing to do with it. I just designed it. The t-shirt company gets everything for that. But it's for you to use to witness with. And the most it does for me is advertise my channel. But as far as anything else, it does nothing. So thank those of you that's helping our ministry too. God bless you all. I'm here to try to help you. Jesus is speaking, y'all. He spoke so hard to me last night, so hard, because this is weighing heavy on our God's heart that Satan is stealing. Come to steal, kill, and destroy. And he's stealing God's people. That's the great deception. Can you lose it? Absolutely. And I encourage you to make sure that you really have it, salvation, because when you really have it, you will go and let God transform your life. You'll become a new person. Then you'll get back. You'll give him your heart, y'all. Then you're going to get baptized in the water. This is the water you must be submerged in. It means you must be living according to it, obeying it, because you love God. If it ain't from your heart, it ain't worth nothing. But if it's from your heart, it's everything. It's your eternal destination. All right. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you all. I'll see some of y'all tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Anything you need is in the description. God bless you.